Okay, you can look at how to point a patio using a mortar gun like this. There's a point master mortar gun. And it's quite simple. The cement just goes in the tube and then the plunger will just push it down. So the most important thing is having a decent mix. So if there's any water sitting on top of the mix, it's not going to work because what will happen with the gun is you'll push it and it'll push the water out and you just end up with solid and it, it won't work. So it's got to be a good mix. Um, so we've got this patio to point. And we'll split it into sections so we're not doing too big a patch at the same time. And just try and put down enough that you're confident you can point it up without it going off too fast. We'll make a start now. You can use a smaller trowel than this because it might make less mess. So I load it like this, get a bit on that. And just slide it in. And you want to fill it up so it's just over three quarters full. Don't fill it right to the top because it'll just squash out when the plunger goes in. And when you're filling the joints, you're simply pushing down like that. Not sure what's happening. Every now and then, you have to give it a little shake just to make sure there's any bits out of it. But it should stay relatively clear inside like that. Another important thing is every now and then give it a clean out with a bucket of water. Right, when you're filling the joints, what you're after is to fill them up so they're sort of five, ten mil higher than the slab, because when you run your bar through it then, it's compressing it in tidy. You don't want to underfill them because it's a nightmare to try and top them up afterwards. All we're looking for is just work your way along like that. Don't worry too much if it's overspill on the slab. The best thing to do is leave it go off a bit and then clean it off. If you clean it off when it's wet, it's just going to smudge and it makes more work. Don't be tempted to do that. And just keep working your way along like that. And again, just put down what you're comfortable with putting down before it goes off and finishing up. Weather is a big factor in how long it's going to take to go off. So if it's winter, it could take all day to go off. And if it's summer, it could take an hour. If you're starting out doing it, try not to do it in direct sunlight because it would be a bit of a nightmare. It's not ideal in direct sunlight, but sometimes you've got no choice, as with today. As the sun will be round on this later, it'll be really warm. Uh, so we'll fill the rest of them up now, and then we'll finish them up. But there's no hard and fast rule about how long it'll take to go off, it's just what it feels like, so we'll have a look at that after. Okay, we're just going to concentrate on a small section just to show what it's like when it's too wet. It'll just smudge it and make a mess. You can just see it's streaking and bringing water to the surface, so it's too wet. Got to keep checking it 
and wait till it's dry enough. I'll show you what it's like when it's dry. They say that'll smudge and any on the edge of the slab will smudge there. So we'll come back in a bit now when it's a bit drier and show you can finish it up. Right, while we wait for it to go off, it's important to keep the point master clean. So you want a stiff brush, a bucket of water. As you can tell, this is an old one, so it's a bit dirty from the years of use. I've probably had it about 10 years. So it's not too bad considering. Give it a good brush like that. Then plunge it up and down in the water. Like that. And then you want to get a brush right in the end like that. And give it a good clean of the nozzle. So every time you're not using it, just make sure you keep it clean like that much easier than when it starts to go off on it. I've got these bits in the sun which are going off so using the fat end of the jointing bar and we're simply running through the slabs like that and ironing it out and then do the joint next to it. And as you can see there's no streaks or anything in it it's just right this is and any mortar that's falling onto the slab is dry enough that it's not going to stain it, as you can see there. And that can simply be brushed away then. You will find if some of the joints are a bit deeper, they may not have gone off so much. So it's not an exact science sometimes. There's going to be bits that are dry and bits that aren't as dry. So once you've done a joint like that, you can brush it off. Ideally, you do a bit of a section, then brush it all off. We're just going to show now. How to do it properly on one little section. So you can just brush it off like that. If you brush it and the brush is leaving brush marks in it, it's too wet to brush. So again, don't be tempted to brush it too early, but it does need to be brushed off. And then all the sweepings as you go in can just be brushed along the slab and in little piles then, and they can be swept up. And when you come from one slab to the other, you'll end up with a join, so you want to just use the edge of the bar just to smooth that join out and get it looking neat and tight. Again, brush it off as you're going. So, so this one here is still a bit wet so if I brush that now see so if you can see that you just see it leaving brush marks there so that's too wet whereas when we brush this dry one it doesn't leave any marks Piles like this there, you just want to sweep them up like that to make sure they're going off the slab. You can have a bucket or a wheelbarrow nearby to put them in.
if you've pointed off a large area, uh, you can use a, a big brush like this rather than a hand brush if you're a bit more confident doing it that way. It's a bit quicker. So again, it's the same sort of thing. And there might be the odd joint you have to go over. A bit of a leaf sticking up there, sadly. shouldn't have to go over many. I think it was a bit damp in places here. It's starting to go off a bit too much. You'll be able to tell if it starts going a bit well, really light in places, it's going off a bit quick, especially when you're in direct sunlight and windy like this. So you can just give it a light spray either with a spray bottle like this or a really light set on the hose. If you do it too much, it'll start to streak very lightly. It's better to do it little and often rather than loads. If you're in the middle of winter or something, there's no way you'll have to do it. Um, or an overcast day, you shouldn't have to do it. Same sunlight, you want to keep an eye on it because if it dries up too fast, it'll be weak.